Welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the taxonomy of singularities. So as, we, as we've seen before, if I have some f of z that has an isolated uh, singularity, Okay, z naught, and uh, we'll always be talking about isolated singularities. We don't uh, so that, and that means, of course, if I have some z naught in the plane, I can uh, I can put a deleted neighborhood around it, and where no other uh, singularities uh, um, are present. Uh, so that just means I can always analyze it in isolation. Okay, so uh, we've seen you know functions say like this, um, uh, one over z minus one, of course that. This has a uh, first power, so we uh, this uh, you know, and, and that's different. We know that of course the residue uh, at z equals one of f is going to be one, but now if I look at f of z, one over z minus one squared, of course the residue at z equals one of f is actually now zero. So we can see, uh, and of course the. Uh, this has varied, of course, the outcome of this is, of course, that um, that uh, this sort of function, uh, if, you, if you take a contour around that singularity, uh, in this case, the singularity is at 1, uh, it's going to be 2 pi i, where in this case, it's going to be 0. Okay, so obviously the, the, t the type or, you know, the type of singularity defined by these different powers, of course, matters a great deal. So it turns out, uh, so these are, of course, are, are very simple functions, but what about in general? In general, you know, they're both singularities here, uh, but it seems like the power seems to matter. But in general, uh, you know, how do we... Uh, describe how do we describe uh, singularities how do we describe singularities and it turns out we have a way of doing it and it's, it's through the Laurent series okay uh, sorry I forgot my U in there Laurent series so the Laurent series um, of course, is a unique representation that does capture the singularities in the function. So, of course, I can write out f of z is equal to the sum of c n n equals uh, negative infinity to infinity of z minus z naught uh, to the n. And of course, with this, we're always uh, considering then that that z naught is true in some deleted neighborhood. That, that surrounds uh, z naught. Okay, all right. So of course we have a, a we have a, a different way to write it. We can also write it in terms of uh, the Taylor part of the series. We call them a n's. Okay, plus a, another part of the series which is the the b n's, and it starts at n equals one and goes to infinity, and it is b n, and that's all the the, the 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 negative powers essentially, the negative exponents. All right. So it turns out what we're going to call so of the Laurent series, we're going to call this the principal part. And clearly, if we go back to these two functions, which are their own Laurent series, uh, we see that their principal parts certainly differ. And that does have different consequences for contour integrals around that singularity. All right, so this principal part is what determines the singularity. So that that is the part that describes uh, singularities. Okay, so uh, now let's go into that three types. So again, we're going to have f of z is equal to the sum a n. Sorry, sum n equals one to infinity uh, of one over uh, z minus z naught to the n. Okay, so this is right here is the principal part, and so now we have uh, uh, 
uh, we have three types. Our taxonomy, if you will, is uh, three uh, types. And the first type is what we're going to call a removable singularity. And it's the one where uh, the principal part is equal to zero. Or otherwise what we say is that bn is equal to zero for all n equals one, two, three, so on all the way to infinity. All right, so it's the case where we have essentially a, um, uh, a, a function with only Taylor type terms, okay? So it, it could be that the function doesn't exist at that point, but the function's not diverging to infinity. Uh, so that's a, what we call a removable singularity. So again, there could be a hole in the function where the, the function is just not defined, where this is somewhere in the plane. Um, uh, but, uh, but the function itself isn't diverging. Uh, 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 its modulus is not growing without bound as we get closer and closer to that singularity. So, you know, uh, functions like this would be f of z is equal to, let's say, you know, um, z over z minus 1 in the denominator, and then maybe, a, um, you know, a, a z squared plus, uh, sorry, maybe uh, we'll do minus 2z uh, plus 1. Okay, so clearly, uh, you know, uh, z cannot be 1 because of the denominator, but we see we see that there is, an, there is something interesting here. If I factor the top, I actually get a z minus 1, uh, z minus 1, all over z minus 1. So in a technical sense, I can actually plug uh, z equals 1 into this function. However, you can see that there is this. So although the domain excludes the value 1, the function nearby behaves behaves like z minus 1, which is, which is a well-behaved continuous function. Okay, so, um, so that's a, a removable singularity. Obviously, uh, no big deal there. Okay, the other one is called a, um, uh, um, uh, uh, an order m type, or an order m pole, okay? And that's where uh, it's simply uh, bm is, e is non-zero uh, for some m greater than or equal to 1, and, uh, and bn is equal to 0 for all n's greater than m. Okay? And so, of course, this is an example where now our, uh, so what this is is a finite length principal part. Okay, and that just means that this principal part is now a finite length. There's some value m where this infinite this this series is uh, stops. So in, in in this case, then we can write the function as. If we go back to our definition in terms of uh, Cn, I can write it as follows. I can write it as uh, C minus m over z minus z naught to the m power. And that is the highest negative exponent in our, it's the highest uh, exponent in the denominator. And then there's a C minus m uh, plus 1 all over z minus z naught to the m uh, uh, minus 1 power all the way until, you, of course, you get to uh, c0. Oh. Which is just a constant. And then you, of course, get c1, z minus z naught uh, plus c2, z minus z naught squared, and so on and so forth, up to infinity. But the point is, there's a finite stopping on the negative side at negative m. Okay. All right, now finally, 
we have another uh, another um, the, the third definition is called an essential uh, singularity. And, uh, and that, of course, is that, um, that uh, the principal part is an infinite uh, order uh, sum. So uh, the principal part is infinite order, so it, it truly is an infinite sum. So uh, we can't truncate the sum. It has to start at 1 and go uh, forever. Okay, so, um, so this really is an infinite sum. Okay, so uh, another, another little d d definition. So we also call it an order m pole. There's a special name, of course, for when m is equal to 1. That's called a simple pole. And of course, we know if I write a, if I do a contour integral surrounding z naught of f of z dz, of course, that's equal to 2 pi i times the residue at f at z equals z naught uh, of f at z equals z naught. And of course, we can, um, and if we have a simple pole, of course, uh, that uh, that can be written. Uh, um, it just means that then the, that's the, the value of the residue. Okay, so of course we can, then what we can do is actually write f of z, I'm not going to make that equal, f of z is equal to uh, some c minus 1 over z minus z naught, that's just to the first power, plus then the, the, all the Taylor terms, the Taylor-like terms, like so. Okay. So, uh, so this type of thing is a simple pole, and of course our residue is that value right there. Okay, so this is just a lot of nomenclature. So uh, now I want to talk about one final thing, um, and that is uh, if I want to talk about, uh, um, uh, if I want to actually express, there's now a sort of, so what we're going to talk about is a, a, a way to represent Um, order m pole functions. So I'm going to write down this as a theorem. I'm not going to prove the theorem entirely, but just sort of sketch out what we're talking about. And that is, it, um, if if f has an order m pole then f of z can be represented as follows by some function phi of z all over z minus z to the m power where um, phi of z is analytic sorry that's z naught there at z naught okay so that's a, so this is a very useful theorem uh, of course, we've been we've been leveraging this sort of thing. We've always been dealing with functions that are sort of you know, I guess what this is is sort of a, a way. A, 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 what what we're really saying is we can always uh, represent uh, poles, uh, uh, sort of order m poles that aren't essential uh, as some rational type expression. Or if I'm when I'm saying rational type, what I really mean there's a ratio. Okay, we can always represent it as follows like that. And so this is an incredibly useful theorem. And of course, uh, uh, because uh, phi is analytic, uh, it has a power series there. That's only the which has no principal part. Uh, and uh, and of course these ANs are just going to be um, the, the 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 standard Taylor 
Taylor coefficients like that. Okay, so um, this is a very useful theorem, again, because we've, we've been utilizing results like this all the time and always breaking up our functions into pieces like that. An analytic piece divided by some, uh, some power of, of z minus z naught to the m. But now we're saying that, yes, any function with an order m pole uh, in their Laurent series can be represented as, as this in this sort of way. And that is incredibly useful to know that fact. All right, so um, let's just go over one example really quick uh, to finish up. So again, we have our f of z is equal to, this is just an example, is equal to z plus 1 all over z squared plus 9, okay? And of course, we can rewrite this as z plus 1 and uh, uh, over z plus 3i times z minus 3i. Now I'm going to take my z naught point to be 3i, and that, of course, is a singularity. Okay, so what's, what's going on with a singularity? Um, so let's actually see, of course, we can, of course, by the theorem... We can always write it as, as, we can actually write phi of z then as uh, z plus 1 uh, over z plus 3i, okay? And that, of course, is analytic at, uh, at 3i, okay? Where that is our z, okay? And, of course, then the function itself can be written as this. all over z minus 3i. In this case, we're talking about uh, m is going to be 1, so it is a simple uh, pole. Okay, so there's a nomenclature we have down now, and in the next few videos, we're going to talk about um, what we can do with this new nomenclature. So thank you very much.